So what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to continue where we were leaving off in last stream, which was that I was doing this core rewrite of the way, um, let's build the debug builds. I was doing this core rewrite of the way the entity movement system goes, and that's a big thing that could be expected to break a lot of stuff, so I was doing it in steps. And we got to this point where we said, hey, um, well, entities can move around again and stuff, but when I run certain level tests like this one where I'm dropping a stone into the water, you know, this is automated, I'm not doing anything, it freezes here because like the testing system is waiting for a transaction to complete that's not completing or, or something. And that's bad because that'll prevent most of our tests from running and we want our tests to run so that we can evaluate uh, whether we broke something really bad. So we need to fix this problem. Um, so we want to figure it out. Um, let's open tests and uh, well, so this is going to be an untimed playback. So ooh, where is that? Let's not untimed playback. Okay, here we go. Oop, oop, oop. Wrong window. Okay, test continue on time playback. So, what I could do is I could go to where it gets stuck, and then I could slow time way down. And then we can just break there. Oh, wait, did I? I'm not running from the debugger right now. Let's run from the debugger. I could have also just attached to the running process, but you know, might as well just restart. Okay. So slow and wait. Well, okay. Let's let it go. Let's let it finish falling. All right, so let's see uh, what we're doing. Oh, right. This doesn't get called every frame anymore. Uh, da -da -da, da -da -da. So simulate. So we are obviously waiting on player transaction. Okay. So why did this thing? No, I don't care. Do not check for updates. Fuck you. All right. So, um, All right, so now this gets updated once per frame. So let's go to that. Like there's a place where we clear it by setting it to zero, all right? Like here. Well, that's one place, but I think there's another one. Yeah, this is the main one. So we call maybe retire next transaction, although maybe that doesn't happen every frame. Yeah, no. All right. That happens from, yeah, from visual interpolation when a move completes.
Yeah. So for some reason when we're playing a test, this didn't retire. And when we're not playing a test, it did retire, but it's not surprising. So, so this, this file where, oops, we're in witness source right now. Let's kill that. Let's kill that. Uh, this file is the one that we were heavily editing. And so it's maybe not surprising So maybe we're somehow returning from here, like I added a way to return. I don't remember exactly what I did last time, which makes this a little harder. Um, I don't see any return. Let's just search for a return. Nope, none in that whole thing. Update. Yeah. So this gets called from simulate. Yeah. Okay, oh, let's. Let's get the eye tracker going. I don't see it. I don't see anything. Eye tracker. Oh wait, it's super. What? What is going on? See, this is like Linux. I run my eye tracker and it doesn't work. And now I have to investigate. It's not detecting my eyes right now. Oh, it's just due to the thing being stupidly tilted. Let me fix that. All right. Okay. That was unlike Linux in that I fixed it in five seconds as opposed to five hours. Um, all right. Hopefully people can see it now. Let me know if you can't. There's always weirdness like maybe the overlay is not in the right place on the thing. Actually, I can just move I can move this over here. I can look. Yep, I see it. I see it. All right. Great. So Now the funny thing is, okay, this maybe retire next transaction is only supposed to get called. When like once in a while, when a previous uh, visual interpolation completes and we did mess with the knowledge or with the we messed with the logic about who completes when, but I don't think the problem is that it's not ever completing because in non-test mode, we're able to walk around. So either something is happening differently in test mode. Uh, well, Look at update guy position.
And this is all that motion controller stuff. Um, so we just set the done flag and return if we're stationary. We do this stuff. Oh. see any real problem. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it down. And I want to find the last instance of when maybe retire next transaction is called, uh, which is uh, not that obvious to me right now when that is in terms of the animation sequence because um, Let me, let me disable that breakpoint for a second. Um, because I mean, I guess I'm going to set the breakpoint while the block is falling. All right, these are all these old breakpoints that we set. Whoop, slow down. Take that comma out of the file. OK, so. There we go. So the question is, do we get a, oh, wait, it's, I wouldn't have expected us to get this right here. Have active, oh, have active animation must get set every frame. That's going to make it more annoying. Let's just, uh, let's break when we have a completed interpolation. Okay. We didn't get a completed interpolation for that boulder. That's that's the problem, I think. And in fact, did you see how it just like fell really suddenly like that? That was weird cuz time was going really slowly. And it just kind of snapped down as soon as I Okay. So that that could have something. Okay. See this again. Ah, I didn't catch it in time. Let's do it again. Okay. I just want to see what happens. It looks like it kind of falls till it's maybe halfway in, like past the Z boundary, and then just snaps to the target position, in which case the falling code is probably calling stop falling too early before its interpolation is complete. Like watch, it's going to go like halfway and then snap. Yep. So okay, what's happening is some of the edits we did are to the falling code. So that's like snapping it into the target position and uh, that's resetting the visual interpolation. So the visual interpolation is never finishing and so we're never calling next transaction, whatever. So we got to look at that. Uh, stop falling. Oh, but we, we may never get to stop falling. Hold on. Because this might be one of the fake falls or something. Let's see if we do. Oh, no, we do. All right. All right. Um, update falling entity is supported.
Let's see what this looked like before I edited it. Because it was a couple days ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. We took out this check. Okay. So what this check used to be for is, am I like starting to fall, but I haven't fallen that far and something like got under me real fast, right? And we changed the meaning of it when we took out, we removed this physically moved variable from the visual interpolation before. And when we did that, I just removed this from the statement, but that changed the meaning of this test. So this test used to be like, hey, if we haven't fallen past the midpoint when we change squares and something scooted under us really fast, then stop falling. Now it's like, hey, anytime that we are somewhere in a square and we're being supported, uh, stop falling. And the problem is, you know, when you're falling and your midpoint just passes the boundary between the square and the square below you, we technically move your actual like gameplay position to the lower cube. And then obviously you're supported because the square below that is the ocean floor and stop falling just like snaps you. So. Um, I think we can preserve the old meaning of it for now. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we could put back the physically moved flag just for falling things because when you're falling, you're not going to be riding on something, which is the, the thing that we were talking about that could physically move you multiple times per frame. So I don't like that solution. A different solution that we could do is like we could say here, look, if you're supported, um, well, actually, supported is an expensive check. So we would do the other check first. We would say, if you're closer to your start point of your interpolation than your end point, and you're supported, um, then stop falling. I'm a little worried about that going haywire in cases where like somebody shoves you sideways while you're in the air or something. Um, and you're on a wrapping level. No, because in that case, your interpolation would have to be modified. And like I said, we're going away from interpolation based thing. So that's fine. Um, Okay, um, let's just try checking distances for now.
Okay, if uh, do we have like a if I call wrapped distance, does that actually check? Yeah. Okay. So I could say uh, wrap distance um, Uh, the grid um, e dot visual position e uh, v dot visual starts and uh, let's call it dist start and dist end. Let's say two. Let's make it real clear. Okay. Um, okay. That's. Not really the kind of check I want to be doing in the middle of falling, but you know, we're preserving the old functionality and someday we will replace that. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, first of all, can I just push this thing into the water? Okay, yes. Can I push it into the water and have it not snap? Yes. Okay. So now, uh, test. Hey, the test plays. The test plays. This one breaks, but we knew that one breaks. Timing changed or something. All right. So now, now we have to uh, do the bulk test and see who fails. It might be a ton of levels. We're going to find out. Um, this is where we were trying to get to last time. Uh, and then I ran out of time before I could do that debug that I just did. Any questions about what we just did while we're running this? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay, so let's make a release build. And uh, we're playing tests at like 1x speed or 3x speed, which is no good. We got to crank it up to 20 like we played last time. Someone said someday equals maybe never. Uh, not in this case, because what we're doing is we're rewriting, uh, we're rewriting the whole thing this whole movement system. So chances are very high that that's actually going to get fixed. Because it, because our whole point is we're getting rid of this visual interpolation thing ultimately, or it's going to become something so different that the same like member variables on it won't even make sense anymore. All right, 20x speed. Oh, that one failed, that's weird. All right, we're going to fail some number of levels that we don't really want to fail. Ugh. Well, we're going to have some things to investigate. Yeah, a lot of things are coming out different. And the question is whether it's like one frame timing dinkage that we don't care about. There might have been a bug in the old code that we fixed, in which case the fails might be fine. Um, this is a level I just made last week. Fear this level. Um, <laughs> 
Did I have a test mode that speed ran the witness? No. Uh, it didn't make as much sense in that game. All right, we're going to have a long list of things to look at. I don't know if it's going to be necessary to let this run to completion because um, we have enough things to investigate already. We'll let it run a little more. But it's obviously going to be way more fails than it should be. Short description of what has been changed. Uh, we're just rewriting the core movement system of how everything works. That's all. How do you come up with the puzzles levels? Does it take a lot of time? Not really. It's pretty easy to design levels. I mean, designing good levels uh, takes time and effort and attention, but you know, usually you start, sometimes levels come out good right away, but, but sometimes you iterate and refine, but making some basic levels is one of the easiest things in game development, honestly. Look at all these fails. Okay, the problem, you know, you know what? I got to let this run to completion because we don't print out any of the fails until the whole test is done, unfortunately. So to get a list of potential things to investigate, I need to let it finish. Maybe I should fix that. I should put in like an early, early end console command that prints out all the fails, but we don't have that yet. Some of the puzzles in Braid were so hard you had to Google the solution. Well, don't ruin the game for yourself. That's why levels in this game are probably not going to be named. So you can't freaking search for the solution for level food, Jimmy Bobber. How do you come up with good ideas for puzzle games? Okay, first, have an idea. Second, evaluate whether it's a good idea. Third, if it's not a good idea, uh, go to one. Do I do any paper prototyping? No, paper prototyping is a bad idea that was spawned in academia because they thought it was too hard to make actual games. Uh, which is now especially false now that anyone can whip out Unity and make something happen, so. Still going. If a person wants to Google a solution, why abstract them? Because all of video game design is about encouraging certain behaviors and discouraging other behaviors, right? Like what color you make something in a game determines whether people notice it and whether they walk toward it or not, right? That's what we think about as game designers. And so thinking about whether the design of my game encourages people to give up and search for answers on the web and ruin the game experience for themselves, or whether my design discourages that, that is right in the wheelhouse of the things that we think about all the time anyway. Do I think games have become better or worse? They've become better, clearly. Dude, games in the 80s that I have nostalgia for because I liked them when I was a kid were pretty terrible compared to games today, unquestionably.
Did I do ever do any enterprise software development? Yes, a little bit. Shouldn't you discourage that through other means than just making it annoying to Google? That, well, what other means are there? I mean, I already do it through other means as well, like giving people other options of what to do in the game than, than just being stuck and not being able to progress. But there's only so much you can do. You need to take away names, people will just use level number, but there's no well-defined level number in this game. There's no such thing. Do I think we have already reached the apex some time ago, or do I think we're still... No, we're still improving. There's no question about that. Why are graphics APIs such a mess? Because all of programming is a mess right now. Graphics APIs are just a special corner of that. Dude, we failed so many levels, we didn't even get through dangerous business. Ninety three levels failed, one third of the levels in the game. That's okay, though, because it's probably all due to the same one or two problems. Okay, I'm going to look at Arcadia V4 because that wouldn't be a timed level. Like, is it that it has a teleport in it? Let's turn down test time rate to two and we'll test this. Whoa, that didn't look right. Those wizard swaps. See how he like multi swapped with that thing. I bet our idea of when to teleport used that physically moved flag as well. And we probably, yeah, see that like wizard teleport just doesn't work consistently. We broke it. Well, yeah. It's like it's, it's teleporting and then teleporting back or something. Dude, I did a bad job of editing that file, but that's no surprise. I am okay with adding the equivalent of a physically moved flag for teleporting. Um, because kind of wh where we're going to evolve the visual interpolation is it's going to sort of be a separate data structure per move. So like if we're falling, here's some data that we want in order to do that motion from frame to frame. If we're teleporting, here's some data that we want, you know, if we're pushing something. And so for teleporting, knowing whether we actually snapped into the target square is basically what you want to know. Yeah, the teleport so I snap to the right and then I'm going to walk down one and I just didn't go right at all for whatever reason. All right, let's take a look at that.
Okay, let's look at what this used to say. Ah. Wait, this was uh, update visual position. Didn't look like it had big changes. All oh, right, we factored that together with the routine after it. That's why I sort of, my eyes skipped by it. Um, Yeah, we did a lot of stuff here. So the actual teleport snap. Oh, remember when I was looking at the mirrors and I was like, the mirrors are messed up because my orientation is going early or late or something. That happened here, I think. So I don't know why I saw fit to poke the position here. First of all. Yeah, this is all messed up. Okay, because the way this works is there's a pre time during which we do some animation. Then we're supposed to teleport you and then there's this post time. Right. And first of all, I screwed that up here. Um, let's just uh, let's edit it. Let's do a thing where we're going to uh, put back a Boolean that tells us whether we have teleported. So we're going to say uh, that's by default false, right? We're going to set that to false. When we reset, um, okay. If we've gone past the pre time, okay. And then, um, I mean, I guess we don't need an else here, right? In principle, we were saying that it's okay to signal a done and our outer loop needs to catch it. And then if we get here, we say return.
or whatever. And then we get rid of this do linear variable and Okay. Right, I gotta say V dots. Well, I don't know if that works. Appears to work better. Test. Well, we just fixed every level that has a teleport in it. Let's see. Yeah, we fixed that messed up graphic. Remember that? He was kind of orientation snapping, and it's because we weren't moving him at the right time, and now we are. Um, I'm going to say... Okay, so this is great. Ah. Teleporting with a mirror is dangerous business. Is there a reason the mirror has a shadow? Why would you, why would you expect the mirror not to have a shadow? I assume these all work. Let's um Yeah. So I bet I wonder if the mirror levels fail. Let's see. No. But a lot of the heroes levels failed. These are going to be all a lot of wizard levels. Like every wizard level will have failed. Let's try a random one. One nine. I might have to rerun the batch again. Yeah, okay, so that succeeds. 221. For some reason, goblin evaluation is really slow. So every time we play back a goblin level, it just, the frame rate is really low like this. Like it's, it's okay when you play it, but... During test playback, we run many simulation frames per render frame, and it just gets super slow. So I'm going to have to speed up goblin uh, attack evaluation, but that's actually going to be part of this whole movie rewrite eventually. Uh, level heroes 318. Fail. 
Frickin' goblins slowing down my frame rate. I honestly don't know why it's as slow as it is. Oh, this is also not a release build, so that doesn't help. But it still should run a lot faster than it does. Okay, so that succeeded. Um, you know, let's try. I think this one didn't work because this orange beam also um, is a teleport beam. So I think this will actually work this time. Yeah. So uh, we just got to make a new release build and run another test. Any questions about what we've been doing? You mean the placeholder for where you will teleport the mirrored character has a shadow? Yeah, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> we haven't thought about, like, that's not the final effect, uh, but also, I mean, it's magic. All sorts of things could happen. I see. Well, if you look closely, like the like Twitch might be messing this up, but the shadow is actually speckly with holes in it. Um, it's just, it's maybe more dense than you would expect. And that's just due to the low res nature of shadow maps. Uh, I don't know. That's... It's something we'll play with. It's, uh, it's only extra weird because the sun is at such a dramatic angle on this level, which I don't think that I would choose for the actual level. All right, let's do some tests. Oh, wait, wait, uh, full test. We're gonna fail way less than the 90 levels now. <clears throat> uh, we didn't do the private test release yet of the language yet, no. Because mostly we've been working on the game as a way of stress testing the language. <clears throat> we haven't done the few language features that we still want to do. When will this be available to the public? I don't know. When it's ready. There's a very simple technique called variance shadows that might work slightly better. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I have been burned in the past by taking academic variance of shadow techniques seriously. So I don't... Whenever somebody says a new shadow map technique, I've just been burned too hard by that to take it seriously, but I don't know. If people who do games tell me it's good, I'll, I'll look at it. Uh, let me get a drink. <clears throat> Back in a second. What will I do with all those comments like at something, keep a list of that like to do? It's just so that I notice them in the code and at some point we can search for them if we want to. Encountered any interesting issues in testing? Not really. Um, there's just definitely we need to speed up some parts of the compiler some more. Um, because it's taking well over one second to compile the game now. So there's, there's at least a couple of things that are super linear in code size. But, you know, that's what you expect when you haven't spent that much time optimizing it yet. So at some time soon, I want to do a profiling stream where we just look at what's taken the time. 
Yeah, I'm not going to read an NVIDIA paper about shadow mapping. It, no, it's, um, well, in, unless I'm specifically trying to shadow map of my own accord right now, but um, just GPU vendors always want you to use their technique and uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Just keeps the squared sum so that you can make a Gaussian out of every pixel as well as a feature, as well as a filtered area. Now, I'm not sure I get it, but... Yeah. Okay. I'll keep that idea in mind. Uh, it's likely that Ignacio is going to do the rest of the work on the shadow system. I mean, I might do, like, we still don't <clears throat> do a very sophisticated, like, view calling for the shadow mapping system and stuff. And I, I might end up doing that, but it's, it's a little unlikely at this point. Now that we have multiple other programmers who can do graphics, I probably won't do it. Someone's asking, what are my thoughts on Star Citizen? Gee, I wasn't aware that Star Citizen was out yet, so I can't really play it and comment. What flavor of water is that? This is aloe drink. I mean, I wouldn't want to comment on a game that I haven't played yet, right? I mean, come on. Goblins are making my level slow. Would I rather have the Lenovo laptop or a spacecraft in Star Citizen? I would rather have the Lenovo laptop. I don't have much to say about Star Citizen, honestly. I mean, I don't know what people are getting out of that for all that money they're putting in, but if they feel like they're getting enough for it, then that's fine. Who am I to judge? <clears throat> you know, making games is serious business. And dangerous business as well.
Telling the truth can be dangerous business because if yourself, because you don't you know what I am. Huh? Well, I'm just giving you what the idea is. Telling the truth can be dangerous business. If you don't know yourself, then you don't know why. Oh, is that brilliant? Telling the truth can be dangerous business. Do I ever feel like I put in a lot of work to my projects while other people just think up scams and sell the future to kids who are terrible with money? Sometimes. <laughs> oh no. We're failing all these timed rover levels still. All right. How many fails have we got? Only 36 now, <clears throat> so that's better. Oh, wait. <clears throat> that's still more than the nine that we wanted, but um, let's see. This one fails. This is one of my levels. Interesting. Wait, what? What? Whoa, I didn't successfully pull that guy. I failed to pull the dragon. Wait, it put my hand out like I was pulling. Maybe not. really strange. Like I'm not supposed to be able to walk a square away from that without pulling it. Are there other pulling levels failing? Well, dragon pull probably is a pulling level. But a lot of pulling levels succeeded. But they may be untimed pulling levels. Like all the ones in the original Heroes of Sokoban are untimed test recordings. And that may mean that we're not issuing a transaction in the same way. See, now it's fine. And now it's not. Dude, I don't know what's going on here. Debug builds. Debug builds. Oh, wait, what level was that? Uh, This one. Uh, 
Stop falling. Who's falling? Well, I guess it's fortunate that I had that breakpoint there still. Who the hell is falling? The dragon? What? Let's go to start falling. Why did the dragon start falling? Okay. Okay, well, why are we stopping falling if we didn't start falling? It's this test. Why are we updating this falling entity? And why did we add it into the falling list? Without calling start fall what? What? What is going on? Okay, start falling is the only thing that adds things to the falling entities array. All right. uh, well, let's check. Wait, what? Why is that there? Oh, this is post undo reevaluate. Right. Well, we're not undoing. I don't think. Well, let's see. Uh, let's. Could update falling entities. Uh, okay, we already have two falling entities for some reason. All right, we're going to reset the level and break and start falling. Okay. Okay. We still have two falling entities. Okay, let's restart the level. Two falling entities. Well, people. That is a predicament, if I do say so.
Well, anything could be a falling entity if it's falling. <laughs> Nobody's falling right now. So why it thinks two things are falling, I don't know. I wonder if it's both of the dragons are falling. Like, why are there two falling things? Um... Falling is true. What is this? It's one of the dragons. Let's see if the other one's a dragon also. Both of the dragons are falling. <clears throat> Which means something is messed up in the... Both of the dragons are falling, but we never call start falling. Maybe we messed up and saved the level with them set to falling, but then they should stop falling. I mean, why don't they, st okay. If they're falling, they should fricking stop falling, in my opinion, because they're on something. So let's see. Okay, they just never. What? So they're falling, but. Okay, they say they're falling and their time of last fall is like 300 seconds and we're at 12 seconds. So I think these got saved badly. Let's confirm that and then we could reset things on load or something. So if these got saved badly, I don't think we draw falling, but um, we can look in the file. Um, Falling is true. Falling time of last move is blah, blah, blah. So uh, this has probably happened before we fixed an editor bug that caused this not to get saved incorrectly and stuff. Um, and I guess our new movement code doesn't handle this bad input in a way that the old one did. And that's not really important, uh, but What is important is, uh, well, I don't know. So let's, when we load a level, we're going to reset these. Um,
Um, it dot following is false. It dot uh, following time of last move is minus one. So the problem is that the 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 time of the next falling step is like 300 seconds in the future. So if we waited long enough, they would stop falling. And the fact that they were falling meant that we couldn't really pull them consistently. Although I don't know why we could pull them sometimes. Okay. Okay. So this is the automated test. All right, let's try that again at 20 times speed. Uh, yeah. I guess the dragons are a little slow. Maybe it's just in general the monster update is slow and we need to fix it. Uh, okay, so I don't know how many levels now we'll test properly. Um, I mean, for all I know, some of the other, I only reset that on monsters. Maybe like rovers have this problem. Let's try the dragon levels. Dragon fall. So slow frame rate. Okay, well that succeeded. Is this dragon pull? Yeah. So that's at least three levels that we fixed, probably, if this one succeeds. Yeah, the monster update, it must have gotten real slow lately. All the levels of the monsters play back slow. All right, that worked. Um, this one has a dragon on it. Oh no, it has a goblin on it, but maybe it's the same problem. Nope, that's a timing thing with the guy not being able to get on the lily pad. Interesting. We're going to have to look at that. Whoa! The dude just straight up turned the other guy into a tree. I'm not sure how that would have been caused by our new changes. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. If you look there, he turns into crystal. The square that's like south of the, south of the warrior here, which he can't touch. Oh, it's the end point. We changed the end point beam rules a little bit, but okay, wait. I don't think that was very recently. No, okay, I feel like what happened is the warrior didn't move as far right as he should because I think he probably should have gone one more. 
Yeah, he tries to go number six, and it fails. Like, watch this. Well, I'll speed up till we get there. So he's like pushing this purple beam. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, blocked. So the question is, why was he blocked there? It's probably something about the interpolations not being set. So then now the, the fact that he wasn't in the square where he meant to be means that the druid guy ends up turning him into a tree because he wasn't supposed to be in that square. When you first load Cowabunga, the dragon on the lower level looks like it's pulsing up and down slightly. Is that just its idle animation? Um, it's not exactly its idle animation, but it is an animation. We just haven't gotten serious about what animations the dragons play, so it's it's just random and messed up right now. That's all that is. But that you know, the animation that it's playing would not affect the gameplay logic. Hello, welcome to the Fish Club. Well, it's the Fish Club if you like and subscribe. You can join the Fish Club. All right, it's very consistent about being blocked. And this is an untimed level, so I'm not sure not sure what's going on there. Dude, Phil got into insane tw Twitter drama back when Twitter wasn't even that insane. Like, Twitter today is so rabid and insane that I will not even touch it barely. So, can't imagine Phil today, now that everybody on Twitter is a complete insane maniac. Huh. Like it's just Oh, wait. This is actually correct behavior. I think the level changed or something. Oh, no, 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 okay. This is a bug. Um, the f what? Why is one gate closing force field gate closing and the other one isn't I need to investigate whether that's a graphical problem no it okay that's that's jacked um, it's not supposed to be possible so this one is flavor one this one is flavor ah 
flavor zero. That's flavor one. That's flavor zero. What? Data levels. End mowers. I want to see if Matt changed this on purpose. I, it doesn't feel that way. What the hell happened? Signing levels. He changed the level. He didn't change that. Didn't change that. 1988, 1986. He did change these. But it looks like it was Maybe he edited the colors there. Wait, he actually. Moved where this is. Making sure you can't double laser yourself off the map in them. Uh, okay. I have to email him about this level. I don't know if you meant to make the level harder, but if so, maybe we should keep the easier version and add this as the harder version or something. All right. I am sending that. So this not passing tests has nothing to do. In fact, I bet if I had bothered to check, this was one of the nine that failed before. Yes, it is. So this is one of the nine that failed before, and it's not because of a bug in the test system. It's because the level was changed. OK, well, that's great. Let's look at Frogger intro. OK, that failed. The crossing from one lily pad to another failed. Um, whoops. Slowing time down like that on time test levels doesn't work. Um, let's just see what happens. It's like he snaps back. Uh, 
I mean, this is just in that family of bugs that we're trying to address in the first place, like movement being bad off lily pads. I'm not sure why it would have changed so much. The timing does seem different, though. Like, why are they so freaking fast? I don't know. Oh, that's just us playing the time level forward. But our test time rate is one. Maybe that doesn't totally work. Let me see what happens. that worked but that was not really the same crossing like there's two ways you could do this level sort of okay oh wait this is the same yeah i actually want it to be a diagonal if they're diagonal on one side of the level then they'll be Parallel on the other side, and that's what I want here. Nope. Damn it. There we go. Uh. All right. So this will be then me just walking straight across from one to the other instead of a diagonal crossing. That worked. So I feel like this is just a messed up timing thing of, of the sort that we're generally trying to solve. So I'm not sure I want to debug it right now. But there might be a deeper problem. So let's maybe what's going on with this one? Let's see. Yeah, that's another race. The race coming out differently. Like that simpler level, the uh, the one that we saw failing early in the stream. I wonder if we changed something about foreign entity occupies square. Oh, dude, this level doesn't even need. Can I actually just run this? Yeah, okay. So we need to fix that. Like that probably means this one is exploitable also. All right. Pfft, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I was in to do. Okay. Sprint, sprint two are exploitable with current timings. That's fine. We could change the size of the level or something. Or you could speed up the skipping stones. I 
Yeah, I want to look at, so there's this routine called foreign entity occupies square. We probably didn't change this, but we may have changed Yeah, okay, here's the thing. The time when we decided to physically move the object used to be just based on when the t parameter was more than 0.5. And now it is based on a different decision. And that would change timing in these situations. Um, so it, it, when there are very tight races where a couple of frames might determine the difference, then uh, I would actually expect the tests to break. So I don't know. Um, let's, you know, we haven't run a full test suite since last, uh, last time I tweaked a thing. So maybe we run it again and maybe if the only things that fail upon cursory examination seem to be this kind of uh, like couple frames off race, that's something we would expect to break and continue to break as we change timings on stones and stuff, which we're going to tune. So uh, I would consider that currently working for our current expectations and then call it Miller time and check it in. Uh, but let's verify that. When you were playing back the test, it seemed like the character was moving slowly, but the stone was skipping in normal speed. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, maybe this isn't even a timed test. It doesn't look like a timed test. That would be bad because you need to record a timed test. Yeah, this could just be an old, old test. Let's look. Let's look at it. Yeah, this is an untimed test which means it just happened to work before despite being untimed. Uh, so now any level with a skipping stone like has to be timed. And if I hit record right now, it'll make it timed. So uh, let's just I mean, like I said, we're going to have to fix it because the level's exploitable anyway, but um, yeah. Whoa. That was much easier than my earlier flailing recording anyway. All right, so now we're testing. All right. Okay. Sprint one, this one's harder. This is the one where you need to block it with the frickin' stone or whatever. Uh, how do I solve this? Okay, I have to do something like go there, go there. Um, I need to push it by one, right? And then push 
push it by one and then whoops There we go. Oh, except I needed to do this one to the south. Ha ha. Okay, so I don't push it by one then. I go here, I go there, I go. Well, Maya, you're playing with me here. And then, uh, okay. Okay. There's got to be a simpler way to solve that level, but... Uh-oh. Well, that's just an animation hitch. Okay. Well, we're going to have to redo those later, uh, but we'll check in those tests for now. Because like I said, the levels are exploitable, so we're going to have to change the timings on them anyway. Um, but yeah, they were failing just because they didn't have time tests. And because skipping stones are timed objects, you need time tests. So it was only luck that they happened to work before. Right. That might be the case for several other levels, for all we know, because... We never ran anything that said ensure all the levels with timed objects have timed tests. So that could be an issue. Uh, let's, uh, let's test it out, bro. Oh, hold on. Got to turn up the speed. 20. What are those lasers doing? Uh, the orange one is a double beam. And it means that every move is essentially a two square teleport instead of a one square move. The purple one is an endpoint beam, and it means that any move in the direction of the beam takes you to that end of the beam in that direction. What will the next big project be? I can't tell you. We, we still have enough work to do on the current ones that it would be premature to speculate about what the next big project will be. Can I tell us when that's happening or not? Uh, it's going up soon, yeah. Um, it's Again, it's gonna be a preliminary site. It's not gonna have all the information that we would like, but it just gives people some information. Um, this week, probably. There is a secret project, right? Of course there's a secret project. Why are you even asking that?
Still no chai latte emote. It's true. We've got to do an emote stream sometime soon. Maybe, maybe late tonight. I don't know. I don't know. How many artists are working on this game? One, two, three, four, five, five, something like that. Has the public reaction been according to my expectations? I don't have any expectations because that's why we're not doing a public release yet because I don't want to deal with dumb internet drama about everything. So <laughs> um, I don't, I basically don't care what people say right now. Um, you know, what, what should happen is, you know, we release a system and then people can form opinions based on actual evidence of what the actual system is. You know what I'm saying? Are those beams to help or hinder you? Well, both, right? The, they're, they're objects that have behavior. Yeah, Benny Hill would not last 10 seconds today. It's... I don't even think he would end up in prison. He would just get assassinated by, like, a left-wing Antifa bomber person. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it, it seems to me like there's a lot of people who are looking forward to the language release, and then there's a lot of people who are standard internet, like, oh, that's dumb people, and, you know... That's all fine, but it's not something I'm going to pay a lot of attention to because I'd rather uh, I'd rather do work than spend a lot of time thinking about what people on the internet are saying. But wait, now these goblin levels are going fast. I guess just in release build they go fast. So we must be doing something... Oh, this one's slow. Okay. Yeah. Even when they're dead, it's going slow. That's weird. Any chance we get public access in 2018? Uh, probably not 2018 still, because like I said, we reoriented our schedule, but uh, it won't be that much longer. I don't think so. Am I interested in what people end up making with the language? Well, I hope so many people make things with it that I can't keep track of it all. That would be ideal. <laughs> Any public access before 2020? Uh, I almost can guarantee yes we'll see I may I may regret those words but are we already doing private tests no but we are uh, we have been expanding the number of people internally who have been using it and expanding the amount of stuff that we make in it How are we currently doing our performance? Already using registers? No, we're not. We're not using registers. But we use LLVM for the, the high performance output, so that's fine. LLVM uses registers just fine. Am I working on a debugger? No, we use the Visual Studio debugger or GDB for now. Get herb. I never heard of a hit that had the word herb in it. Tell me the truth. There's a 
Is there a spur V back end? Uh, no, not right now. You don't know why. We're succeeding in so many levels that we got through dangerous business again. We're looping. Dude, we need to get It's Raining Chacos in there or something. Because as we get more and more levels, it's going to be increasingly unacceptable. Okay, that level, that level fails. All right, how many are we failing now? What? Twenty-nine. Ugh, that's still a lot. But it could all be new levels. Like I know Matt's added some levels. And then just weird timing changes. Okay, barred gated platform is timed. Let's look at that. Hmm. Whoa. Whoa. So the error is when that one stone goes sailing off into infinity on the left, uh, that's bad because we need it for later in the level. Let me see. Let me see if I can play this and if the behavior seems to make sense. Whoops, okay. It's not actually, I want this and then this and Oops, didn't mean to do that. It's fine though. Whoops. All right, so all of this behavior seems reasonable. So again, I think the test fail on this level is down to a timing change. And like, we're gonna have lots of timing changes probably. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure how worried I should be about that level. Problem is we have 20 freaking. oh wait, did I not paste it out? 29 failing. Minus nine that we know should fail. So we have 20 new fails. Let's delete the known fails.
and see if we see any okay these are the new fails um, so I see lily pad timing problems these are all new um, what's barred escape wait why'd she die How does that make any sense? Wait, what's the... Why'd she die? Okay, we can't check this in. Okay. So what happened is she is moving to her new square. She's moving to her new square, but the timing in that move is different now for some reason. And she gets to the square next to the goblin before the goblin. No. I mean, it doesn't look like that, but... That's my only reasonable explanation. Is she gets there before he teleports. The physical move happens before he... Oh... You know, oh, dude, when we were looking at the physical move thing, where is that? Where was the thing with like the Z rounding and stuff? Update physical position. Uh, no, it was in proximity grid. Remember we did that thing. Um, oh, grid like Z boundary. So So this thing is not right. This is asymmetric. So we want floor of we want floor of 0.5. So these point ones in here were originally only to act as epsilons, but now we're using this every frame to detect what square people are in. And that point one caused like a highly asymmetric rounding. And because we're going to the left, I believe it rounded us into that square point one of the way, except and not point five of the way. Uh, let's, let's go there again. And that would actually change a lot of things. Wait, level barred escape. Oh, my alt key is stuck down. There we go. Let's try it now. Hey, look, it works. All right, guess what we have to do again? Release build. Rebuild everything. 
because that could change so much stuff. Does the kill state get sent through a connection with the goblins? Well, the rule is the goblins can attack anything that's like one Cartesian square off. So north, south, east, or west neighbors. Um, now, generally, because the guy's in a teleport beam, he would have teleported out before she got there. But because her getting there was only, she only needed to get 10% of the way there instead of 50% of the way there like before, it drastically changed the timing and she got killed. That's good. I think that'll actually fix a lot of these skipping stone and lily pad timing problems. Uh, we'll find out. Oh, let's, let's crank up the test speed again. I got to go to the office eventually today. Why did I choose to make this game 3D? Because of many reasons. Um, first, we can make it look nicer for less effort, which doesn't sound logical, but it is. Second, we can build more, int well, actually, first, we can build more interesting gameplay. Second, uh, we can make it look nicer for less work. Um, Like 2D, if you're going to draw a zillion frames of a zillion characters doing a zillion things, it's really hard. I guess we could build a 2D animation system. But like this level is 3D. You couldn't do this level in 2D. It's not obvious why, because you can't see the, right, the bottom floor, but um, yeah. I mean, I understand him wanting to be kind of 2D. I would have left Handmade Hero totally 2D. I don't know why he went off on the whole 3D kick. Maybe because he wanted to show how to do 3D, which is legit. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's educational. Like, it's a thing. So for a game that's supposed to be small, like Handmade Hero, 2D is probably easier, right? If a game is trying to be big, then at some point 3D is actually easier. Even though you wouldn't think that. How small can I make a Hello Sailor executable? I don't know. We That's not the sort of thing we've been looking at very carefully. Like, none of our backends are optimized for size right now. Um, I mean, the real underlying question is about dependencies and what gets compiled in. And we're doing, uh, it is a priority of ours to make sure that you don't take dependencies that you don't need, right? And so in the long term, we should come out fine on that. But it's, you know, we're just getting the language done right now. So we're not doing that stuff. Got frustrated working in the confines of 2.5D and moving to 3D made more sense for his skill set. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I guess he changed his mind about staying in 2D. If I want to start an Austin office. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we're going to be expanding to other offices. You know, we are a... Uh, we're doing fine financially for an independent development studio, but we do not have a multi-office kind of budget. It's 
Still going, man. We're running tests. We're running tests. Running tests. Running tests. Running tests. One, two, running tests. Three, four, running tests. Five, six, running tests. One, two. Ugh, all those goblins slowing things down. Are we still translating stuff into C? No, we haven't done that in like two and a half years. We got rid of the C back end a long time ago. Okay, let's take a look at the damage. Eleven failed. That's great. It's almost all changed levels, new levels, things that we knew fail. The only real new thing that I spot on here is D cluster. And that is a tweaky timing thing still, I think. Um, 
So I'm good with this. I'm good with checking this in. And it's Miller time. And next stream, I got to go to work and actually work now. Um, next stream, we're going to do more revamping of the movement system. Um, I don't know exactly what, but like I said, we're gradually transitioning it from this uh, this thing that was transactional at a low level with only one transaction at once to be not that way. Um, maybe the next thing to do is going to be to change it so that when objects carry each other, it is not via visual interpolations. That would be a good thing. Yeah, 11 out of 276 is not too bad. Come on. Come on, people. What stuff do I do at work? I, I don't know. Same things, different things. All right. Commit. Uh, step one of revamping the visual interpolation system for more robust. Uh, 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 player moving, carrying, etc. Boom! All right. I'm glad we got to check that in. Uh oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to update first because it's been a while. We might get merge conflicts. Opinions on Diablo Immortal, I, dude. Diablo is the original game about clicking a bunch of things meaninglessly to get rewards. So that's a natural fit for the phone as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, seriously, I don't know why all these hardcore gamers are trying to pretend Diablo isn't a phone game. I mean, Jesus. Lines of code. Uh, well, that gets printed out every time we compile. Let's run the compiler. Uh, 101297, including blank lines and comments. What is my favorite video game that I haven't made? It is really hard to pick a favorite. I don't know. You can go on Steam and see my recommendation list, though. Dude, this update is taking forever. Maybe I should have updated source, but not data, but uh, let's just make sure we get everything. Oh no, falling is conflicted. No. Oh, I did this endpoints change at work yesterday. All right. Um, okay, this is my support check. And uh, why do they make diffs so, like this is from three different versions for some reason? This is from the original. This is, yeah, whatever. Like, dude, we just want that. We get rid of that. This bracket goes there, obviously. And actually, um, Let's put the endpoints check before that. Right. 
I'm not going to run all the tests again. I'm just going to have, have faith that that works. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's test the level that has falling just to be basic. Oh God, we're processing new assets. This level has falling. All right, great. Great. It works. Ship it. Boom. Thanks, everybody, for coming by. Let's... Um, Let's look and see if there's somebody to raid or host or something.